Hi everyone, it's Wednesday the 15th of June and it's uh, yeah, 11.15 in the morning. I'm actually doing a video in the morning. Ooh, shock! Anyway, um, what we're going to be doing today is, well, hopefully cleaning up and hopefully we'll make it work as well. I've got a uh, an old street light here. There it is. So I plan to uh, get that all cleaned up and hopefully working. Now, I actually picked this up last night. So I decided to do a little bit of dumpster diving. Um, so I think I've mentioned this in previous videos. Um, as you look at my lounge window, just to the left, it's like a gravel car park and there used to be the Citizens Advice Bureau, which I demolished those um, poor cabins about three years ago now, probably before they fell to pieces. Um, they'd been sat there since I can remember anyway. And the old town council office building. Now, that building is owned by North Norfolk District Council, who evicted the town council because Weatherspoons were interested in purchasing that building to convert it into one of their, you know, pub restaurant places. However, Five years later, and Weatherspoons were still messing about, according to an NDC. You get two different stories, so you just believe whichever. <laughs> um, they just said, you know, enough is enough. And to be honest, after five years, you would have thought a company that seemed eager to move into a town would have done more to sign the paperwork and buy the property and actually, you know, get the ball rolling. But nope. Apparently where the spoons don't do that, they just like to drag the feet. Anyway, so once NNDC had just decided to drop everything, they decided, instead of letting the building you know continue to sit empty, that they would just do a full-on refurbishment. I mean they're doing everything. I've been watching them for the last three months. Um now they're doing a full rewire, they've re they're replastering all the walls and going by what's in the skip at the moment, that looks like they're redoing all the ceilings as well. Um, new fire alarm, new intruder alarm, all that's been ripped out. In fact I've got bits of the fire alarm in the lounge because I've rescued that and bits of an intruder alarm in the cupboard. Um, not that it's of any use, I can't use it myself but I just thought it'd be interesting to have a look at. So. Um, yeah, and that's where this light came from. So, there it is. It is a Philips branded. It's not actually worked for at least five years. Um, I don't know if they turned it off. I don't know if the bulb was blown because this, for some reason up there, this had a habit of doing that. So, what I actually want to do is remove the bulb. And that needs a good clean. Just pop that clip there. Cast aluminium shell. So I'm hoping this will just slide out somehow. There we go. So I'm going to sink a water here. I'm just going to plop that straight in there. And hopefully I can clean it up so it looks a, at least a little bit better. Here's the lamp. It uses a different lamp to um, a lot of street light units actually. I'm actually quite pleased because I've got this corner bracket as well. I actually, now I can see what they've done. It's not a corner bracket, they've just drilled the holes in there to mount it on a corner. Yeah, this is just a 70 watt sun. It's a radium. Made in Slovakia from the looks of it. I've got a spare here. It's an actual Philips branded one as well. 70 watt song, just like this one. Made in Belgium. I know I've got another, well I think they're songs, another two of these downstairs in the shed. Um, I am going to try the original one just to see because I can't actually see anything wrong with it, but that doesn't mean it's going to work. Right, so there we go. There's the gear tray. Dead spiders and 
cobwebs. So the video is going to get a bit noisy because I'm going to have to use the vacuum cleaner to clean all this out. At first I actually thought this had been like retrofitted to use a song, but no, apparently these particular models were sold like that. And apparently I sold them as a kit with all the mountain bracket and the, um, the uh, sensor as well. So we'll look at any sen the sensors, they just sort of go in and screw. If you actually don't get them around the right way, they don't work. I think, looking at this, it's actually labelled. So if that's N, and we've got an N right there, so I'm going to assume that has to go back on. Like that. I don't think I need to take that off, so I'm just going to leave it on for now. I will take it off and just clean all the crap out of it. Right, so it looks like we've only got... I've got a bolt there. I haven't bought a spanner with me. But... Oh, that's just for the bracket, so I don't need to worry about that. Right. Let's bring in Captain Noisy. And we'll... Uh... Give it a bit of a suck out, shove it up. Some cobwebs all over this already where I've been cleaning around the windows. Right. Noise alert! do a full-on restoration on this by the way, at least not yet. It doesn't really need it, it just needs this rubbed out. It's got some of that aluminium oxide stuff going on around the edge there. But what I want to do is just basically open it up, clean it out, make sure the electric gubbins and everything is okay before I plug it in and turn it on. Clean the bowl and fit a cable. I mean, I've got to open this up to fit the wires on. Oh, I forgot to vacuum around there. Well, I'm going to have to turn it on again anyway to vacuum out inside here, so let's just get the gear tray out. For some reason it's got a ridiculously long bloody screw in it for what's needed. Now, I wonder if there's actually anything alive under here. Oh. Silly me, there's a screw right there. I'll do a separate video having a look at those fire alarm boxes. I have no idea about them. That's one reason why I picked them up. Anything alive under here? No. Nope. No rust either, actually. It's actually quite clean. See where it looks like it's um, had some heat damage, but that's about it. That is actually um, it's heat from the transformer. I'm hoping that hasn't actually gone. The capacitor has come off its mount, so let's just get that back on there. Finger tight for the time being, because I haven't got a spanner in here, so I was actually expecting there to be you know, like a ton of cobwebs and maybe a spider living under here or something, but nope. That's <laughs> that's actually pretty clean. Alright, so that's the cap in. Oh, that's not the transformer, that's the ballast, you numbed up. Um, I may actually have something like that kicking around somewhere. That's a may, though. Um, um, I don't think I like that earth white. It's literally just a piece of what looks like 1.5 mil from a twin and earth. The sleeve on there is literally just wrapped around the mounting screw for this. Um, I don't even think, you know, they've uh, stripped the paintwork away to make it have a connection. <laughs> oh well. Right. I'm going to lose that screw. Put that other one. So, 
is there something else? We've got Earth's connected here. I don't get this. Was it ah? Was it because they couldn't get all the Earths into that? Yeah, because we've got two twin Earths going in here, haven't we? I just thought it doesn't make sense because they've got Earth coming in from this block here, which I think is mains coming in. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Because it goes out to the sensor, then that sensor comes back to that. Yeah. Okay. I was just seeing if they could have gotten more Earths in there, but it doesn't all look like it. So I think what I need to do is just disconnect from here. Because those are the Earths. Ow! That go out to the two TNEs there. sort of connector I see used in a lot of fluorescent light fitness as well. You've only got the screws on one side, the screw targets. The other side I think they just push in and lock in. I suppose the other side is meant to be a permanent um, fix, isn't it? It's not meant to be removed. Make me know where the creepy crawlies were hiding. pulled quite a lot through there. Right, um, there's no point me putting this gear tray back in, is there, because I've got to connect the cable on. But first, I've got to make a bit more noise. I'll try and get rid of some of this fluff, so noise alert. <laughs> I haven't got any bloody wire cuts here either, have I? I'm just going to use this clover leaf or a clover leaf because I've got loads of these epoxy cables, so I don't mind sacrificing the one. Uh, let me just pause a minute because I need what do I need? Cutters. The bowl is still soaking, so I might actually just try and wash that up. Yeah, I'll be back in a minute. I'm just going to go and find my wire cutters and see if I can give this bowl a rinse. Righty-ho, so I've had a quick go at cleaning up the bowl, um, <clears throat> I've just got it soaking in flush for a minute. Right. So, poke that in there. The only pair of wire cutters I could find and they're blunt as assholes. I've literally got loads of pairs from Parkside like this and I can't find any of them at the minute. Right, so there's my three wires. Right. 
you know, I've actually seen people online whinge that some of us like to cut the end of the cable like that, part it, and then pull the wires down. I, I don't see what difference it makes. That's the way I've always done it. That's the way electricians I worked with many years ago used to do it. So, I know this is a shitty thin bit of flex, but that should do just to, you know, test this. Right. I wonder how many years this has uh, sat up there on that corner. Now, when I'm putting a single wire in or any terminal, I always fold the ends over. I don't bother if I'm stuffing more than one in, but something I was always taught to do so I've always done it creates uh, more surface area for the screw to bite down on and thus a better more secure connection which is exactly what you want you don't want it to um, come apart do you and you don't want a loose connection because then you'll get arcs and that's how fires start. I have got a better um, bit of flex that I can put on this. The problem is it's about nine miles away. <laughs> it's over at Mum's. You know, and I'm here so... And I was just eager to get this, you know, fired up. Which I can do, I can do that, fire it up without the bolt. The bolt's just there to cover things. I suppose it's there in case the bulb decides to explode, maybe. I've not heard of them doing that. I'm not going to say it's impossible, though. I don't know. A dipstick and got everything all tangled up. Right. I should have got a spanner for that, shouldn't I? Never mind. Who decided to do this with all that wiring? That's a pain in the backside. Right. make life a bit easier if I turn it upside down. I still... <laughs> what? Why don't you tuck that in like that? Is that that's better? Shit, I'd hate to do that upside down. That would be an absolute nightmare. Pissing around on that while while it's uh, hanging upside down on the wall. No, thank you. Well, I thought this would be a different video anyway. It's not every day we get to see the insides of a street light. Well, this is different to um, the old socks ones that you'd. We used to get on the roads until everything went LED. Nothing against LED, I just like the old orange glow of the um, old socks lights. I hear people all the time slating LED street lights, how crap they are. But um, to be honest, they upgraded my road here three, four years ago now. They're still working fine. So, to me, it just depends on the brand. You know, if you're going to go ridiculously cheap, they ain't going to last. 
Right, this is the original bulb. Uh, I need a towel or something just to cover up that sense. I'm going to turn. I can't turn it off there, can I? I have to unplug it. Right, so let's just cover up the sensor. So in theory, if the bulb is good, when I do this, we get nothing. <laughs> but is it the bulb, or is it the ballast? What? Well, took its time, but it worked. That ballast is making a very loud hum as well. Right, so what I'm going to do... Probably had to uh, wait for the photo cell to kick in. It's taking me all this time to remember it's called a photo cell. Right, so let's just do that. Is it the blub? Let's see if it does anything. I'll just give this. Ooh. Well, I think that one's blowing, hasn't it? It's not going to do anything. Well, it's cleaner. Let's, let's just move you around. There we go. It's cleaner than it was. It's still some crap and whatnot around. There's some sort of stain right in this corner. I can't. I don't know what it is. Fly or something? I don't want to use anything, you know, more abrasive than this sponge because uh, I don't want to scratch the plastic up. There's like some sort of white scum, I suppose you'd call it, on the bottom. There's some just up on that end there. Uh, the flash has got most of that off. Um, it does seem to come off with a bit of elbow grease as well. That'll, that'll do for now. Dry. Right. Yes, done. On. Let's just uh, Go on the outside of the well, the bowl looks better than it did, did when I first got it. Okay, I've got to be careful with that because uh, I think this has got quite brittle with age from the sand that just made. Right, so what I'm going to do is unplug. Remove this one as I'm pretty certain this is a dud. Place. Lock the bowl back on. Plug in.
I thought this was making a really bad noise for a second there. It's not, it's cars out on the gravel car park out front. I was getting a bit worried. There we go. It's actually warming up quite nicely, isn't it? Well, these sons warm up quite quick. Quicker than the um, socks would have. Maybe that's why these were, apparently these were sold as like um, security lights. So you'd probably find a lot of these around old um, well, offices like that for the car park. That ballast does make a heck of a hum though, I don't know if it's normal for these. Oh, that's what I can hear, it's a truck to empty out the portal. So if you can hear a noise in the background, that's what it is. There we go. Now eventually I will give that bowl a proper good scrubbing. Try and clean it up a bit more. Oof, that's getting a bit bright now. Um, yeah, just clean up the general housing, especially around this lip bit where that corrosion is. It is bright. I haven't got a corner in the flat that I could mount this onto. Well, actually I have, it's in the hallway. Um, don't tempt me. Although I wouldn't want to mount this one, I might mount one of my other ones, so I might take that off. Well, I just suppose it doesn't matter, because if I stuck that up on the wall, I can just swap. I'm going to have to turn that off now, because that's, uh, that's rather bright. <laughs> there we go. It all works. The sensor seems to work. Perhaps I should have removed this to see if the sensor did work and turn all the lights back on. That's right where that ballast is and that feels stone cold so I don't know what all that heat is for. Pardon me. It wouldn't be a quick swap would it if I had this up on the wall. I want to change the lanterns out because I'd have to disconnect the cable and wire on the new ones. I don't know. I'll have a think about it. Sweet. It works. And I just needed a new lamp. I don't know if there's a way you can tell just by looking up there if this is gone. I'm going to presume it is as well because. Like I said, this hasn't worked for a oof. That lamp generates quite a lot of heat. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I think that one is a dud. I have to see if I can't obtain some more of these. There we go then, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks a lot for watching. As always, any comments, questions, etc. in the comments are down below. And as always, I'll leave a link to Discord in the description. So if you have a Discord and you'd like to, you can join the server. Um, yeah, thanks a lot for watching. I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.